And um, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for, for the chance to um, tell you about some work uh, of mine that's actually uh, four years old. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's something uh, um, uh, I still like to think about here and there. And it's, uh, it's work with uh, my collaborator, uh, Gonzalo Palma. Uh, and it's on, uh, it's on uh, trying to represent uh, upon fields um, a notion of minimal length that, uh, that uh, uh, is very strongly motivated from several different approaches, but in particular from string theory. Uh, and um, well, what do I mean by that is, well, there's, very, there's, very, um, there's various indications that if you use strings as your uh, effective probes of geometry, that there's a, a, a sort of a, a modification to the usual Heisenberg uncertainty relations that can that can be uh, that can arise from various different uh, considerations, uh, in particular from string scattering at high energies, and uh, in particular, I suppose the one that I could uh, explain the most intuitively uh, from the world sheet perspective. So, uh, what do I mean by that? Um, just as it's possible to derive the usual uh, Heisenberg uncertainty relations from the path integral for a point particle, a uh, relativistic point particle, propagating through space-time. So it is possible to, if you like, uh, consider the Nambu-Goto action, consider the propagation of a string, discretize uh, this path integral, and demand that uh, the details of what you compute do not depend on this discretization. Uh, so basically that your model um, uh, corresponds to a renormalization group fixed point, and lo and behold, something like this pops out. Okay, that's a, uh, so if you like, it's, it's a generalization to the Nambu-Goto action of what would have come if you had done the same thing to the point particle uh, action. And so, uh, uh, so this uh, is telling you that, 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 that there is an effective minimal uh, uncertainty. So how would you see that? You just basically solve this quadratic equation for delta p and this, this will pop out relatively quickly afterwards. So what, what uh, um, how does one conceive of that? Well, uh, heuristically, uh, if, you, if you have sort of a even, you know, very pedestrian knowledge of, of string theory at the level of, you know, an introductory course or a review article, uh, you know that the string is basically made up of, uh, uh, you know, something that, that has vibrational modes. And uh, as you dial up the center of mass energy of, these, uh, of the string, if you imagine firing in strings at higher and higher energy, you're basically exciting more and more of these oscillators. The string likes to wiggle much more. So uh, since you try to uh, minimize uh, your uncertainty in position by going to higher and higher energies, you're eventually going to come across the fact that there's a compensatory uh, deformation of the string. That's, if you like, a very heuristic way of understanding where this minimal length comes from in string theory. Uh, so I would like to stress that this is, if you like, just the first term in a whole tower of terms, of which if you truncate to just this term, one can just sort of take as a toy model what the consequences of this might be for various things. And there was sort of a, a, a cottage industry that sort of sprung up around this uh, at the, the turn of uh, the 2000s um, that uh, uh, tried to basically figure out how and if uh, one could represent this relationship on fields so that we could actually compute uh, certain uh, uh, corrections to low energy observables. And so um, if you like a very uh, uh, minimalist uh, perspective uh, that some people had, I mean, so, so there are various statements made by various people of various strengths. I think uh, uh, I can maximize the Venn diagram of how much people agree with what I say by just saying that uh, uh, the scale of inflation could be as large as 10 to the 15 GeV. And uh, could it be that a string theory was low enough uh, in, in, in scale that one could hope to uh, see some of the effects of, of whatever representation one writes down of the uncertainty relation on uh, CMB observables? So how does one go about, how does one go about even representi representing this relationship on fields? And how does these representations deform the usual uh, correlation functions that you find? And, and moreover, how do these representations sit with our usual notions of decoupling and the observed low energy symmetries, i.e. Uh, Lorentz invariants at, uh, uh, of, 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 the, of effective field theory. So um, uh, the, 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 this talk is going to focus on uh, addressing uh, a subset of these questions. 
Um, but by first by reviewing earlier attempts, uh, and notably by uh, Akeem Kempf and collaborators, of trying to figure out how to represent this on fields just as a sort of a toy, toy model uh, uh, approach. And uh, the, the result is uh, you get, um, uh, you can write down a, a field theoretic representation that is Lorentz non-covariant non and is non-local at scales square root of beta. Quite a lot like the effective field theory of, of uh, something that you would expect to have broken time transition variance in the early universe. Okay, it's Lorentz non-covariant and it has, uh, uh, it's, you get a, a, a tower of operators suppressed in powers of one over the string mass. So, but uh, unlike, unlike a usual effective field theory, you will find uh, various strange things such as the quanta, or if you like the, the fluctuation modes of this field propagate superluminally. However, uh, that's not a problem because in order to create a closed time-like curve, it costs an infinite amount of energy. So um, I'm not going to address if you like uh, uh, the full consistency of this model. If you like, I'm going to hide behind the shoulder of, of string theory and just say, well, if this really does represent something from string theory, I'm just going to sort of sidestep that and say that it's not going to uh, matter too much. And uh, if I may motivate actually where this all came from uh, is that there was a bunch of papers that said, well, maybe we could see effects uh, of, of, of very high energy physics in CMB observables, uh, unlike the intuition that comes from effective field theory, uh, wherein maybe uh, you get certain correction observables that are not as suppressed as one would think. Uh, the conclusion of our investigation is, although you do describe, you can represent this in terms of a Lorentz non-covariant, non-local field theory, you, you actually end up reproducing a sort of standard effective field theory results, is that you do get corrections, but they're very suppressed. And they're suppressed in the usual way you'd expect from a, um, an effective field theory. It's, it's basically eight squared over cutoff squared, which uh, you'd be, uh, well, you just can't observe, really. So that's, that's if you like the, um, uh, uh, the starting points and coming back to where we started of, uh, of this investigation. But if you like, uh, one could forget about the, the, the net conclusions of what I'm about to talk about and just view this as an interesting exercise in mathematical physics because uh, there are some very interesting things that pop out, uh, beautiful things that pop out in the end. So, uh, it, so I'd just like to begin by sort of reviewing um, the footsteps of uh, uh, the reviewing the work that's been done before uh, by various authors, uh, again, most notably by Kempf, on how one would uh, try to write down field theories that respect this uh, deformed uncertainty relation. So let's try something like this. Okay, just make that an ansatz. Uh, the Jacobi identities immediately imply the following consistency relations between um, G and F, these arbitrary functions. Uh, and uh, you can basically solve that, uh, um, that uh, ODE in the following sense. And one could write down a representation of this algebra by introducing auxiliary variables uh, uh, in the following manner. If we represent the position in the following uh, by d by d rho, uh, the position operator acting on fields as, as d by d rho, uh, one can reproduce the generalized uncertainty principle by representing momenta in the following way. Okay, so note that rho is the generator of translations, but p is no longer the generation of generator of translations. So in order for this representation to be well-defined, we have that this row variable uh, is bounded from above. Um, and moreover, one could write down a scalar product with which it is symmetric, uh, uh, and all fields have to satisfy this particular uh, boundary condition. So really, I'm just trying to uh, figure out some way of representing fields uh, uh, that satisfy um, uh, that represent the generalized uncertainty relation. So, so this is, this is a, 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 um, just uh, reviewing what, uh, what has been tried before. So uh, one could then attempt to generalize what, uh, uh, what the action for a scalar field would look like by realizing that, the, uh, the, that on the, the, the standard action for a scalar field in Minkowski space can be written in the following manner. Uh, it's just a, 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 a rewriting of, of uh, the, the usual uh, action. So it, a very natural way of incorporating the, gener uh, the generalized uncertainty principle is to just substitute in the new representation of P that respects the generalized uncertainty principle where you formerly had the usual minus I H bar D by DX. Doing so gives you an action that looks like the following um, and stress that's on Minkowski space. 
So this is a this is a this is a good starting point. So let's now, since we're interested in doing cosmology, let's generalize this to a curved background. Uh, one can write down the action for uh, uh, a scalar field uh, on a on a Friedman Robertson Walker background in conformal coordinates in the following manner. It's just um, um, writing out what the components of of the uh, of the action would be, and realizing that the the uh, the generalized uncertainty principle was was expressed in terms of physical coordinates, uh, uh, meaning not the co-moving coordinates. Uh, one has to uh, represent uh, everything in terms of the physical coordinates. So if you write phi as, as, uh, in terms of physical coordinates, one can basically rewrite this action in terms of this funny uh, rewriting, where really this just reproduces this, and this A operator, if you like, is just a convective derivative. It just basically cancels off the, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, time dependence artificially induced uh, on the uh, position. So uh, then the prescription then appears to be that uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an FRW background, uh, one just substitutes in what, uh, what the uh, uh, representation would be for um, momentum that respects the generalized uncertainty relation. And I'm going to breeze to this now because I haven't even gotten to what I wanted to discuss, is that, as you can see, it's really complicated, okay? Uh, but nevertheless, uh, uh, many papers were written and people made out like bandits with hundreds of citations uh, for, for, for uh, essentially writing down something that's very opaque and uh, it's, a major, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major development, but it's not particularly useful for trying to plumb uh, low energy consequences off, off of it. So uh, since I'm running out of time and everybody wants to go home, I'll just state some results. So uh, the result is that uh, one can actually, uh, by the way, I should stress, there's, uh, there's various issues with this uh, representation, not least being an operator ordering ambiguity. And let me just tell you that uh, here is another representation. I'm just going to throw it at you, okay? It's been derived uh, from various considerations, but this is, if you like, uh, um, the, um, uh, the, 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 the claim, uh, the sort of the, the results that I'm here to present. And moreover, it, uh, it, uh, it also implies, in order for this representation to be well-defined, that physical wavelengths are bounded in the following way. So intuitively, uh, what does that mean for space-time? It's, it's discretized. So just as in one-dimensional, you know, just as in quantum mechanics, when you put a particle in the box, in a box, momentum is quantized. Imagine putting particle in a momentum box now, in a momentum sphere. Uh, uh, positions are, if you like, discretized. That's exactly what happens here. And uh, with this representation, which I assert satisfies the generalized uncertainty principle, one can write down the action for a scalar field for which the equations for the mode functions present uh, analytically, uh, analytic solutions. So these are the solutions. I invite you to compare that to uh, this, which is implicit, hasn't even been solved, and in fact, uh, uh, they don't admit analytic solutions. But uh, uh, writing these analytic solutions, you can also see that you just basically regenerate a one-parameter deformation of the usual states that, that, uh, uh, that correspond to the Bunch-Davies uh, vacuum of inflation. So in particular, if I take this beta parameter to zero, I reproduce the usual uh, uh, Bunch-Davies vacuum wave. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it should be straightforward if you just go ahead and do it. So uh, one can usually, uh, so, uh, 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 and you know, uh, one can sort of uh, infer some very sensible uh, things that, uh, that uh, I mean, you know, this, everything sort of hangs together very nicely. Uh, and of course, one can then uh, consider uh, What's, what, uh, what predictions would be if, infl if inflaton was described by a scalar field that respected this generalized uncertainty relation. Since the background is a spatial zero mode, it doesn't have any uh, spatial dependence. So uh, the background solution goes the same. You still have to consider uh, space. And uh, one can compute uh, the deformations to the correlation functions pretty directly. And uh, that uh, is, if you like, uh, the, the, the whole, uh, the butt of this talk is that um, is uh, is because you have analytic uh, uh, expressions for the mode functions, uh, which uh, I, I believe was um, you know which is a, a novel contribution, and um, 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 uh, you you can basically compute uh, 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 corrections to the power spectrum the, and and the scalar and spectral tilts. There's a, a breaking of the uh, consistency relation between them. Uh, however, uh, uh, 
it is uh, exceedingly unlikely that one would ever observe this because it would demand at the scale, uh, in order for this to be observable, in order for these questions to be observable, you would require the string length to be much less than the gut scale, which is uh, pretty unreasonable by anyone's reckoning. So, um, um, so uh, to summarize, um, I mean, perhaps it seems a little strange to give a talk about something uh, where you're saying that, uh, you know, you don't see any particularly interesting. Uh, the motivation for this was, you know, this is something that people looked at quite a lot. And, uh, um, and um, um, there were lots of question marks left over. And um, um, the, the goal of the study was simply just to present another representation of this uh, stringy minimal length and to recover some of the technology of, uh, of uh, effective field theory that you thought you would have lost. And, but uh, in, in doing so, you find that um, um, you basically don't get anything particularly interesting. So, uh, questions. Uh, the fact that you have uh, modes quantized, uh, it looks like, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't uh, get the, all the details, uh, but it looks like that uh, the transformation uh, that you make from normal coordinates uh, to this function rho and phi, then it sort of induces uh, a sort of boundary or something like that, that then, like, like in, like in uh, uh, when you get a, I mean, when you have a bear, for instance, you have, when you have boundary, you have a, a quantized uh, modes uh, mm -hmm. in ordinary quantum mechanics, uh, for instance. Then I have the impression uh, that something uh, like this in your, your formulation happens. Uh, is it true? Or? No, that's exactly right. Yes. So, so, ah, okay. so uh, uh, you know, I think I, 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 I tried to comment on this. I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at this representation right here, uh, you know, in order for this representation to be well defined, obviously uh, physical wavelengths are are uh, bounded by this, uh, uh, by this, I mean, it, it just, it's just telling you, you know, you, you, in order to do quantum mechanics, you need a scale of product, you need a notion of symmetry, not necessarily her, her, hermeticity, but symmetry mid, at bare minimum. Uh, and what this is telling you is, uh, if you like, uh, this is exactly the inverse of having a particle in a box. See, in, in, if you put a particle in a box, momentum is quantized. If you put a particle in a momentum box, position is quantized. So, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, if you like, uh, uh, you know, a very interesting uh, uh, undergraduate quantum mechanics problem one could set, you know, uh, for people if they want to. Yep. Any, any, any physical uh, motivation for doing that or, I don't know? Yes, yeah, so, so the mo physical motivation is that we're trying to represent on fields, okay, uh, what uh, string theory tells us has to happen, okay? So, so, the, so the whole motivation of this was trying to represent onto fields this, uh, let me just get to it, this relation, okay? So, so this, this comes out from various different uh, considerations in string theory, but um, um, if, yeah, so that's, that's uh, uh, is trying to write down a field theory that respects this supposedly model independent prediction of string theory, that there is a minimal length. Okay, because usual quantum field theory, by the way, is, is, I mean, you know, there is no such thing, right? I mean, you can, you can arbitrarily expand an operator, uh, you know, in terms of local operators. Uh, you basically have infinite resolution in quantum field theory. So it's, it, this is the goal of this work, yes. Okay. There. Hello? Uh, excuse me. I might have missed how you did it. Uh, at a certain moment, you said that you find a one-parameter family of vacua. But how do you find that? I mean, uh, usually the equation of motions uh, are something, and then you have to impose a, an initial condition. So why do you say that the initial condition comes naturally in that setup? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't say anything about the initial conditions, right? Okay. No, no, all I'm saying is that, uh, okay, so what I, what I meant by that is uh, previously, uh, if you were using the previous representation, you had these mode functions to satisfy. So you have to expand all physical fluctuations in terms of these eigen modes. Okay, there do not exist analytic expressions for this particular form. With this new representation, you have to solve this uh, uh, characteristic equation. Okay, for whose for which the solutions are given by the following, and this is very transparent, right? I mean, this is 
if this, if this beta parameter is your, is your, if you like your minimal length scale, you send this to zero, gamma goes to, gamma goes to one, uh, no, you no, just reproduce the usual uh, bunch Davies. No, no, it's clear. Scale. Is that I, have, I hadn't seen the plus minus, so you have both positive yeah. and negative yeah, yeah. frequency. I thought that for some reason, but because I hadn't seen the plus minus, you had only one of the two, either only the positive or no, only the no, negative. No. That seemed quite... Quite yes, I would say. The, well, you know, you, it's, it's, I, uh, I know I know what you're sensitive to, and yeah. uh, and that is a, that is something that that uh, you know it's it's a whole other yeah issue. Okay. But uh, it's that's not been addressed by this. No, no, no. Th this is, is just clear. trying to show yeah. that one can do something mm -hmm. very calculably uh, uh, straightforward. Um, no, no, it, it's clear. Yeah. I hadn't seen the plus minus, mm. so you have both uh, solutions. Mm. Let's say. Thank you. Oh. Um, I was struck by the fact that. In this kind of approach, you end up with a nonlinear quadratic, with a nonlinear second order equation. Uh, if I'm correct. Y well, in momentum space, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's non-local, but in momentum space, it's still a linear. Right. Linear Whereas, linear. if you have the form dispersion relations and you try to put that in field theory without non-commutativity and moral products and etc., what you have is a linear but higher order derivative. That's theory. right. So there's kind of some kind of complementary between these two things. I mean, they, in both cases, in one case, we have a maximum momentum. Here we have a minimum, you have an uncertainty. Like well, well, actually, for non-commutative, so non uh, you see, if, you're just, if you talk about just the free theory, yeah. uh, the, the, the Moyal product cancels out for the quadratic part of the action, right? non commutative is only ever seen in interactions. So even for, even for that, you would get, uh, uh, you'd get a linear. Uh, well, it depends. So basically, if you have the form dispersion relations, you can always redefine the the energy and momentum so that you have linear relations. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of, you, you're putting everything in the vertex, which is what you're saying. Yeah, well. But it's it, kind of the hiding the fact that you have a nonlinear theory, really. So. Uh, I mean, I, mean I, you see, I mean, here, if you like, this is your modified dispersion relation, right? Right. And it's super, it's super liminal, actually, right? right. But, yeah. uh, but it actually turns out that if you try to construct a you know, closed time like curve of energy, you just can't do it. It costs infinite energy. Sure. So this is a. And that's not a problem, right? We know, we, we know we're, we're mature enough now to not be scared of superluminal propagation, provided you can't, you know, can't create close time-like curves. Um, there's, there's many things about this that, uh, uh, you see, it, this is just, if you like, some, 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 some cute mathematics. I, I don't know how much this really represents something that comes from string theory. This, this, there are many open issues with this, but so far, everything we've, we've sort of thrown at it seems to be like, well, this is, this is something quite nice. Let's thank us uh, both again and all the speakers of, of the workshop. Thank you very much. I think now Mark would like to say something, some, some final concluding